This is an in-service training program presented by Nutrition Care Systems. Today's topic, taking food temperatures, why and how. Upon completing this in-service, you will be able to, number one, list two reasons why taking temperatures is important in food service. Number two, be familiar with two different types of thermometers. And number three, you will understand the proper technique for using and calibrating a bimetallic stemmed thermometer. Foodborne illness is a disease carried to people by food. It's often becoming more and more of a concern for those who run any type of food service establishment. And every year there's multiple outbreaks in foods ranging from hamburgers to various produce like salads, spinach, or strawberries. So one important way to prevent foodborne illness is to make sure the food is prepared, stored, and held at the proper temperature. And also proper use of a thermometer can help assure that food prepared in your kitchen is safe to eat. So taking food temperatures, why and how? Temperatures are an integral part of any food safety program in the kitchen. Foods that are cooked to the proper temperature do not allow bacteria to grow. And if bacteria does not grow, people who eat the food will not get sick or will not get a foodborne illness. Foods that are stored at the right temperature do not allow bacteria to grow also. So if the bacteria does not grow, people who eat the food will not get foodborne illness. We all know food tastes better if it's served at the right temperature. The agencies that regulate us, whether it's local, state, and federal, expect us to store, cook, and hold our food at safe temperatures as part of a good food handling practice and to protect everyone from getting any kind of foodborne illness. And your temperature should be taken and recorded daily for any food storage equipment just to make sure that they're working properly. You should have a log for recording these temperatures. Take the temperature of refrigerator and freezers to assure safe food storage. Record those daily and then report any abnormal temperatures immediately to your supervisor. So the food should be cooked and held at the proper temperature to prevent any bacteria from growing. Make sure you take temperatures of all foods to be served at each meal and document and keep on file in the kitchen. So you make sure you take temperatures of foods while they are being held before serving. Document and keep on file in your kitchen. Take temperatures of foods during the cooling or reheating process is very important to assure foods are safely cooled and heated, especially if you're using the two-stage cooling process. Proper temperatures, refrigerators should be kept at 41 degrees or lower, freezer zero or below. Cooking temperatures vary depending on the food product. For example, hamburger needs to be cooked to 155, chicken to 165. Holding of foods, hot food should be kept at 135 or higher, cold foods at 41 degrees or lower. Cool foods using the two-stage cooling process, cool from 135 to 70 within two hours, and from 70 to 41 within four hours, and then reheat foods to 165 degrees for 15 seconds. How to take a food temperature. With a bimetallic stem thermometer, which is shown here in the picture, you first want to calibrate the thermometer and make sure that it's accurate. And then place the sanitized thermometer in the food, make sure that it's placed in the thickest part of the food, and that the small little eye or dimple on the stem is placed appropriately in the food. So many facilities use a digital thermometer, and the same applies to a digital thermometer as the bimetallic, and make sure it's sanitized before placing in the food, and then make sure it's placed in the thickest part of the food before reading the temperature. And why do we need to calibrate the thermometer? Because that assures an accurate temperature reading. And how do you calibrate a bimetallic stem thermometer? You want to place the thermometer in a 50-50 mix, like a slush mix of ice and water, and the thermometer should read 32 degrees. Another option is to place the thermometer in a cup of boiling water, 
and the thermometer should reach 212 degrees or the correct boiling point depending on your elevation. But really make sure you're cautious with that method so you don't get burned. Often the bimetallic thermometers come with a tool that you can use as an adjustment as far as like a wrench. Uh, if you don't have that, you just use any other uh, wrench that you might have. And then calibrate that regularly or as per your facility protocol to make sure you have accurate readings. Let's take a short quiz. Question number one, cold or refrigerated food should be stored at A, 32 degrees or less, B, 41 degrees or more, C, 41 degrees or less, or D, zero degrees or less. And the answer to question number one, cold or refrigerated foods should be stored at C, 41 degrees or less. Question number two, when checking temperatures of foods on the serving line, check A, only the entree at each meal, B, all foods on the line at each meal, C, all foods on the line one time daily, or D, only the hot foods on the serving line. And the answer to question number two, when checking temperatures of foods on the serving line, of course the answer is B. Make sure you check all foods on the line at each meal. Question number three, hot food should be held at A, 135 degrees or more, B, 180 degrees or more, C, 155 degrees or more, or D, 120 degrees or less. And the answer to question number three, hot food should be held at 135 degrees or higher. Number four is a true or false question. A digital or bimetallic thermometer can be used to measure food temperatures. And the answer to question number four, of course, is true. Either of these thermometers can be used to measure food temperatures. Question number five, storing foods at the right temperature is one way to help avoid foodborne illness. And the answer to question number five, of course, is true. Storing foods at the right temperature is one way to help avoid foodborne illness. Thank you for your participation in today's program. Our goal is for you to use this information in your daily work. We hope you are well served today and every day. If you would like more information about our in-service training programs or our dietitian consulting services, please contact us at Nutrition Care Systems, 1275 Davis Road, Suite 121, Elgin, Illinois or visit us on the web at nutritioncaresystems.com.